Okay, welcome to this uh, video on PS4000 on how to create a new project. I'm going to take this project through to a stage where you are ready to then begin programming. So this will cover starting a new project from scratch and then getting all of the data points imported into the project ready for the next stage. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is obviously start up PS4000 and then when running and you've logged in with your username and password you can select project and new and we need to enter in a project name I'm going to call this AHU Reading just as an example and that's unique to you you can then give an order number which is again unique to you I tend to use the date structure which uh, allows me to keep a track of where I am with my projects and makes them easy to find. Um, four, and this is going to be my sixth project of the day. So I end that with those six. But you can use this as your own project numbers, order numbers, or whatever you want. Because I'm logged in as myself and I set myself up as a user in the settings tab, my default language is English. But if that's not the case for you, set yourselves up as a user or just select the language you require. Uh, Trick is a CAD package that is integrated into PS4000 but that's only available in Germany. Uh, we don't have licenses agreements or we, we certainly don't have a, a translated version of that software for us to use so we just have to simply click on these three little dots and turn Trick off by selecting yes to PS4000 only. Okay so BMS version Unless you're using the, the GLT from Quebec Computer as a, as a front end integration into the controller, you can leave that as empty, um, as I am in this case. And the current version D4D, um, this is related to the system release we're currently working with. We're currently on system release G, which is where it's defaulted to. And two or three times a year, Quebec Computer will issue a DVD which contains a whole new system release. Now that includes updates for all of the products in the range and that also carries across all of the service and support functions and features and tools and also controller firmware for the whole controller range. So if I was to want to, want to program a, a controller I programmed maybe a couple of years ago I may have to roll the PS4000 back before I can communicate with that controller or make sure that I'm on the same firmware version uh, or introduce a new controller onto an old site so I want to make sure everything's compatible. Uh, features and functions aren't so, so different but because we use BACnet as a, as a programming protocol we have to make sure BACnet is at the same version otherwise we can come into some com complexities uh, down the road if one controller is a slightly newer to the others so it's always best to try and keep them all at the same firmware version if the site is working for working fine there's no need to update so we'll keep it as release G and then the final setting we need to make is uh, DDC 4000 uh, for our device family okay I must make sure I tick DDC 4000 before I progress which I'm now ready to do what will then happen is PS4000 will add our new project into the project database and it will allow us then to start assigning all of the information that we need to create our, uh, our custom project. Okay, so when it's ready it will default to the location tab in the bottom left hand corner and um, the workflow is to move across the tabs until we get to the tab 4000 page indicated by the mouse there which is where we can conduct all of our um, our strategy the location tab allows us to introduce a, a geographical location for the project um, so we can accommodate our customers requirements so for example if we were looking to program a solution for McDonald's restaurants we would have hundreds of restaurants to try and fit into one project now we can do that with PS4000 but it would mean I would need to set up a, a general view of the UK market 
in terms of geographical location. So I may have London, and then I have, may have boroughs of London, and then I may have restaurants within that borough of London. So I have to physically have enough locations within my project tree so that I can house them. When we're using um, multiple locations like that, that's not a problem. In my particular case, I've got a very small project and I want to program an outstation which is going to be located in that customer's premises. When I want to introduce new locations, I simply right click on the heading of AHU Reading and I can introduce a new location. What will that then lead me to do is I'll then progress onto the DDC tab where I can actually introduce outstations and bits and pieces, but I will then allocate the outstation into the particular location. What I want to do really is avoid all of that trouble by using something called data point input. Now because I've got data points already allocated to a specific location, if I bring the data points in, it will create the location tree for me. All I then have to do is rename them to be the locations that I want them to be. So it's a bit like reverse engineering, but it really does save a hell of a lot of work further down the line. Let me demonstrate this by carrying out the process. So all I do is I click on Exchange. I'm on the Locations tab, and I click on the Exchange, and I select Import List of Data Points. It will then take you to a location, or you can navigate to the location to find where your templates are going to be located. Now, as you can see here, I've set myself up a, a Dropbox account. I've got a Keyback computer folder with a PS4000 folder inside, and I've then got a, uh, a folder with data point lists. And there's two lists I can choose from. One is a default, which has got one, one of each point type inside or I've got a template here which has got a whole host of project information associated to heating systems, uh, ventilation systems, boilers, hot water control. All of these point types have already been set up in this database then I can just bring them in and then I can then choose which, one, which data points I want to use in my project. The ones I don't use are of no consequence. This really does just save me on creating data points. But in order for the data points to be exist, I have to have a location identity for them. And that's why I do this first, and then you'll see the, the shortcut that it follows. So I just click on Open. Um, I can browse the list to see what's inside. I've got lots of things like extension buttons and all these sorts of things, and hot water enabled signals, etc. etc. And I just click on OK. And then PS4000 will start to um, create my location tree. It will then start to apply all of the categories of all the different data points that I wish to have in my project. And I can do this multiple times. It's not limited to once, but each time I do it, it will create a new location tree for each of these data point databases. No. It's quite cumbersome to discuss, but when you have carried out this process, you'll be quite impressed with how much time it's actually going to save, rather than doing it down the manual, down the manual route, which was what we had to do in the old, uh, well, previously. So whilst this is uh, doing its thing, it's important to understand that not all of the points that you may need in your coming project may be in the list. So you can go back, engineer the list, re-import it, and then it will give you the points that you have you've been looking for. But it's important to try and maintain the same list for yourself. Therefore the next project you run you can import your new list and keep adding to it over time and then you'll end up with a, a very comprehensive list of data points and all the types you need for your forthcoming projects. So at the moment there's not nothing to see. In order for the data point import to be acknowledged I have to close the project down and then reopen it. So I select project, close, and then project, open, and then I use the date filter to choose the, 
to help me find the project I've just created because it's going to be top of the tree, it's the one I've just created and select OK. Now you'll see that I've got a little arrow next to AHU Reading and in there it's allocated me a building and it's allocated me a plant room which is fine, that's not complete but it's done some of the work for me. You'll find if I click on the DDC tab it's allocated uh, the AHU Reading but no other information but on the Plants tab you'll find I've got a lot of information which has been created by the import. Now this is basically lists lots of different data point entries ready and waiting for me now to allocate onto the controller that I want to bring into the system. So if I was programming an air handling unit I can browse all the different options for air handling unit cooling dampers, if I'm going to program a hot water circuit, I've got gas fired heaters, I've got all the pumps neat that I may potentially want to have in my project for controlling my hot water and all the different options. Again, the ones I don't use are irrelevant. This is just a library of all the information that I may need in my project um, to simplify my programming of that project. Okay. So, in order for me to get to a point where this becomes useful, I must complete the location tree. Now to do that, I go back onto the locations tab and I add in a new location, a new control cabinet onto my plant room and I just say OK. I'm not worried about what that's called at this moment in time. And onto the cabinet, I must add a new field. A field will represent something like the panel door where the controller is going to be located. Now I've got to the stage where I've got a panel door available, I can now introduce a new controller. I click on the DDC tab and then I right click on the project title and I select new and I can introduce the first thing which is a network. The controller must sit on a network. If there are going to be multiple controllers, they should all sit on the same network. If they're not on the same network, they won't be able to communicate but they will still be in the same project file. So. On my network number one, I can now select new and I can add in my new DDC 4200 controller or my DDC 420 controller, multiples of or just one of a kind. So I'm going to choose one DDC 420 and say OK. Incidentally, when I did that, you'll notice if I go to properties that the, lo take the location for the controller was on the control cabinet that I allowed myself to, to um, it's on this location tab. You'll see it's positioned it onto the field that I'd selected. It defaulted to that one location because that's all I had. If I add another controller in onto the network, I'll select new onto the network new I can choose where the location would be so it may have been that this one would be in London I don't know say Islington McDonald's I may want one for Glasgow so I would find Glasgow in the list and then I would find Cumbernauld a selection of a location in Glasgow and then I can allocate my controller onto that location okay I'm not going to do that but I've got one controller in here it's very important at this stage I set up my network properties and I choose network configuration and I, I allocate my IP address, the gateway and also the broadcast which will follow the same IP arrange but be ending in 255. I can set up the subnet mask uh, and I can set up the backnet ID for the controller. So let's say this is going to be backnet address number 99, IP address 1.99, the gateway is 1.1, broadcast is 1.255, and the DVC address is going to be 99. And I can just say OK to that. Now we are in a position where we can start to allocate some of this point data onto our controller. And to do that, I can right click on the controller I want to program and select terminal view 
This will produce um, all of the terminal connections that are available on the DVC 420. And here they are, pin numbers. Uh, I've got 1 to 8, and then 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 9 and 10 are digital inputs, 11 to 15 are binary outputs, and pins 1 to 8 are universal, so they can be binary inputs, binary outputs, analog inputs or analog outputs. They can also be used for meter points as well for pulse counting, should you want to do that. So, now I've got my terminal list, I now need to find which point types want to appear on which pin. So to do this, I go onto the plants tab and I, for example, I want to program a hot water cylinder to be on my controller. So the first thing I do, if I select what type of heating system it is, I can, I can either display all the points in this group, which would mean I would get six groups of individual points, or I can select individual groups to, to, to narrow my search down, so to speak. So, if I just want to look at sensors with hot water system, I can right click on sensors and select refresh text table. Now, I've just got a few points allocated to hot water temperature. If I was to right click on hot water and refresh the text table, I would have all of the data points associated to all of the groups listed in a quite a, an arbitrary listing format and it's not a problem to go through all that but as you can see it just takes a little bit of time to work through so the speed thing is to utilize the groups that I've created or the groups that you want to create and just refresh the text table to narrow down your searching so if I wanted to have a HWS flow temperature and drop that onto pin number one I literally click on the title away from the columns and then just drag it onto the pin that I want to allocate with my controller. If I've made a mistake, it's not a problem. I can right click on the pin and re-enable the selected terminal and that will delete the entry allowing me to put it back again if I wanted to. Okay. I can then select another group, let's say for argument's sake I want to put a boiler onto uh, one of the pins. I can refresh the boiler text table and go to temps, refresh text table. Now I've got sensors associated to the, the more general information or maybe it's specifically boiler number one that I want to have information on. So I can refresh the text table for boiler number one and now I've got all the point types associated to boiler number one and I've got a special boiler number one flow temperature and I'm going to put that onto pin number two. Um, in terms of general heating temperatures, if I go on to heating, uh, I go on to temps general, refresh text table, again I can put in there a common flow temperature for all the boilers I have and I can then choose boiler one, boiler two, boiler three as necessary. Uh, dependent upon my project design. We continue this process until all of the points have been allocated and we're ready to progress to the next stage.